Welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. I am very excited to bring this video to you uh, for In the Mind of Trey Anastasio for the Reba Jam. Uh, I just want to give you a couple quick heads up. There is a lot of that. Well, there are a lot of things to study. Uh, take it easy. Study one at a time. This video will be here for you always. So let's get right down to it. The Reba Jam. Two chords back and forth. E flat major to F over and over again. 15 minutes. Now, what Trey does with these two chords is nothing short of uh, outstanding, so I want to discuss that. There are many phases to this jam, and um, he mixes and matches them at will, but we're going to discuss them in a linear fashion. So, um, the first part I want to talk about is the actual chord progression, E flat to F. There's a lot of discussion on um, what mode this is in, and really it, it doesn't matter. Not that it doesn't matter, but you'll see it doesn't matter. E flat to F is the four and five chord of B flat major. And so this is in the key of B flat major. Yes, you can say it's an E flat Lydian progression. Um, I don't believe it that, that it would be an F mixed Lydian progression because it doesn't start in the F, but nonetheless, that's not going to matter at all because this isn't really a very modal jam. It's a very chord tone centric key scale jam. And so the B flat major scale is going to really conquer it all. But before we even get there, we got to start at the beginning beginning with what, with what Trey does. What Trey does at the very beginning of this jam is what I call priming the, the audience. Okay. And so, well, what do I mean by that? The, the, the back and track E flat F. Trey comes in with a couple of ideas here. Um, we're going to start the very simplest and get to a little more complex. Number one, just straight up chord tones. Now, a lot of what I'm going to do right now is going to be between, going to be between, excuse me, the eighth fret and eleventh fret. And uh, my Patreon will have all these practice videos everywhere, and the chart will also have all the chord tones and pentatonics and scales everywhere. Here we go. So, so here is our E flat major chord, G shaped on the eighth fret, right here. Okay. Now it, you can play the thin side, like I talk about in my channel, or you can play the thick side, which would be 11, 10, 8, 8, 8. Okay. I'll link the caged uh, chords below in case you haven't seen them in the video. And so here are the chord tones. All right. So it's 11, 10, 8, 8, 8, 11, 11. All right, and so when he's on the E flat, he might just be simply playing these chord tones. And then when he's on the F, here's my F chord. Excuse me, my, my F chord. You can see it's the A shaped chord. And my chord tones here are going to be 8, 8, 7, 10, 10, 10, 8. Pause this video, write it down, get the chart, whatever you want. All right, and so we have this guy or this guy. All right, so listen to what it sounds like when I'm on the E flat, I play E flat chord tones. When I'm on the F, I play F chord tones. Phase one, part A. Phase one, part B, is we introduce a little bit more of the pentatonic per chord. And what do I mean by that? Well, I have my G-shaped uh, E flat chord, and this goes with your form one pentatonic. Here's my F chord, and this goes with my form five. All right, I'll say the frets for that one, just in case you don't know it. 8, 10, 8, 10, excuse me, 7, 10, 7, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10. The reason I bring this up is because it is definitely apparent that Trey, if you haven't seen it, there's a video called like Trey Anastasio teaches an acoustic guitar lesson. And in there, he references how he hears the chords that he wants to play in his solo as individual notes. And 
in on that E flat, he always comes in on this F. Not always, not always, but a lot of the time he'll come in on the F. And you're going, well, why why is he coming in on the F on the E flat? Well, because an E flat add nine is a very happy sound. And he knows this stuff. I mean, the guy's a genius, and he plays the song, probably has played the song a thousand times already. And so the idea is, um, from observation, he loves coming in on this F. And this F is part of the pentatonic. And on the F chord, he'll switch over to some F major pentatonics. Now, I want to discuss this. There's, there's so much to talk about. In a major pentatonic, those intervals are 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. And the major chords are 1, 3, and 5. So inside of your pentatonics, you have uh, major chord tones in there. And if you watch my wedge video, uh, I discussed that as well. So by sheer happenstance, by sheer chance, you're going to hit chord tones. But he kind of fools around a little bit more with some pentatonics and chord tones. So first, I'll start off with just those, uh, just those chord tones. Excuse me. Now some pentatonics. All I'm doing there, all I'm doing is just thinking about my pentatonic shape now and the chord tones. Now, we're still in this priming method, okay, where I, I want to talk about that. What Trey, uh, what Trey does in this section is he's priming the audience and he's getting them to kind of move back and forth with these chord tones, E flat and F and E flat and F, and he's being very gentle. And when you watch any of these videos, you can hear this happen, uh, any of the videos on YouTube, um, you can hear it happen and he, he does it so well, he gets the audience moving back and forth. So when he starts to depart this priming stage, the audience still has this memory of, uh, of the E flat and the F going back and forth. So in this priming phase, we have chord tones, chord tones with pentatonics, and then he also mixes in the key scale with chord tones, and so I want to show you that. It's kind of easy to remember when you look at it. If you know your form 1 pentatonic and your form 5 pentatonic I just showed you, when you overlap those two, you get the whole key scale. Now the key is B flat major. Now it's a B flat major scale down here. We're not going to use that. We're going to stay right about here. And this scale shape where we're working is 8, uh, sorry, 8, 10, 11, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 8, 10, 11, 8, 10, 11. That's the scale. It's a B flat major scale located on the 10th fret. And a lot of people might be saying, man, that really looks like that Dorian scale shape. Don't worry about that. We'll come back to that later. This is still a B flat major scale. And so when he's starting to depart this like priming stage of priming the audience, he'll start to move a little bit more um, with the chord tones, but move a little bit more with the scale and create a little bit uh, a heavier melody bass type thing. Instead of moving back and forth with those chords, he'll kind of do that, but he'll introduce some more uh, linear paths. Something like this, like... So now, you can hear that happening. Uh, he starts to kind of dance around the scale. He plays less back and forth and a little bit more organically. Now, one thing I want to bring up before we depart uh, the priming stage, okay, is he will definitely play this arpeggio on top of the E flat. Now, it's not an E flat arpeggio. It is a B flat arpeggio. Why, you ask? Great, great question. It's because it's the five of the E flat, and Trey Anastasia loves building tension with stacking these fives. I talk about it all over my channel. And so here is the chord we're looking at, okay? It's it's a D-shaped chord on the eighth fret, eighth fret A, eighth fret uh, D, tenth fret G, eleventh fret B, and tenth fret um, of the high E. I just play it like this. Sorry, like this, if I can play correctly. There it is. The idea is this adds a little bit of that tray playful tension thing. And when you're on the E flat, this this type of like, like, sorry. And and I'll show it to you here. So let's see.
Now I did there several times, you can hear he doesn't do it as much in one space. Now I wanna to talk to you again. Last thing, we're in the priming stage, just like getting the audience to feel these chord changes. If you look at the E flat chord, you have a one, a three, and a five. You might have noticed when I'm playing that B flat chord, I'm kind of taking this note and going down to the flat five and dragging it in. And you can do this move, whether you're doing that B flat chord or anytime you want for the E arpeggio, the E flat arpeggios. And so let's see if we can get all of this in. So I tried to throw it all in there. I was thinking about it consciously. I didn't really say it out loud. Hopefully you can hear all these ideas. All right. The last thing we'll talk about before we enter Jamville. All right. A lot of this jam is all about this beginning section and the ending section and the middle. <laughs> so um, the idea is this. This scale shape that I'm using is, is not by accident and it's not uh, haphazard. You can watch Trey really stay in this scale shape. We'll talk about more soon, but he uses this Dorian pattern on top of this jam because of a couple things. I want to show you something. This is that E flat chord, and then here's that F. And these two notes, this note here in the length fret is in the E flat, this note here is in the F, and you'll hear him a lot when he plays that E flat note. And then when he changes to the F, he'll pre-bend this note and sink into it. This is a classic tray sound. Listen for it. Now, again, I did it. I did it back to back. He doesn't do it back to back all the time. He also takes a, a free will with this. And so you're going to hear a lot of this stuff here, a lot of it, where he plays in this Dorian scale shape, and he loves that stuff. So let's see if I can, chord tones, pentatonics, that fifth thing, the sliding in on the fifth, the Dorian scale, and then some of that special sauce. Let's just see if we can get that going. Here we go. And two, ready, and... Actually, before we move forward, I want to show you something else. All those ideas, you're going to find them doing everywhere on the guitar neck. You'll see them up here. That's an E-flat major chord tone. You'll see them here. Uh, and I want to actually talk about this section. If you watch some videos, you can see them doing what I'm about to show you. Nothing is different. I'm just going to show you everything we did in a new space between 10th fret and uh, 13th fret. And so really quickly, your E flat major chord is your E shape here. I like to play it 11, 11, 12, 13. Your F chord is now your G shape here. So just E chord tones. To F. You can even do this, when you're in the shape, you can do the sliding of a five. Stuff like that. Uh, pentatonic wise, form two on the ten, on the um, 11th fret for the E flat. Form one on the 10th fret for F. And so you can mix and match. Don't forget to come in on the F if you need to for the, uh, or if you want to for the E flat. I explained that. It's 
All right, so there's that stuff there. And the key scale really quickly will be your C-shaped your C-shaped uh, scale here. Um, it's gonna be 10, 11, 12, 10, <laughs> 12, 13, 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 10, 11, 13, 10, 11, 13. So I'll show you all that really quickly. I'm gonna speed this process up, but you'll see him either doing it here or back here, or here or here. Two very close places, but you'll hear it. Let's see. Sorry, I had to redo my loop, here we go. Something simple like that. I just want to show you, and you'll see him up here, okay? And uh, let's keep going. So now we're going to get into um, what he starts to do when the band speeds up. Now, this is hard for you to do with this loop going, okay? And so what you need to do actually is, is stop and re record your loops uh, for a faster speed because the song picks up. He pulls John Fishman, he pulls Gordon, he pulls Paige, everything starts to get faster. And you can't really do what we're about to do with that original slow, like staccato, boom, 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 boom. You have to speed it up. So I'm going to speed up my loop right now and be right back to you. All right, I'm back at you. I sped the loop up, and now we're into the jam section. So what is he doing? Well, really quickly in the jam, he's still always paying attention to the chord tones, and you can find your chord tones anywhere, but he's sewing them together with the B-flat major scale. Now, I'm just going to show you really quickly his favorite place. He does it everywhere, but the place where he ends up is going to be up on this 15th and 18th fret area, and I'm going to show you the scale. The B-flat major scale is going to be 15, 17, 18, 15, 17, 18, 15, 17. 14, 15, 17, 15, 16, 18, 15, 16, 18. Okay, here's my B flat chord, and here's my B flat major scale. And he's gonna be here. Now, when he gets up here, he usually has some distortion on, whether it's the hardest distortion or the rip roaring distortion. It's up to him, it's up to you. So I'm gonna put a light distortion on, and all I'm gonna do here is, again, just listen. I've departed the, the priming. I, I, I'm out of the priming now, I'm starting to lead, I'm starting to be organic, I'm trying to flow and listen to myself. The band is sped up, and I'm gonna be using this um, scale here. Now, I want you to listen for what, uh, again, do I play exactly like Trey? No, nobody does, all right? And so the idea is he's gonna, uh, you know, design these riffs around some chord tones, like here's my E flat, here's my F, this will all be in the chart, okay? And he's gonna play it back and forth a couple times, and then on that F, you're gonna hear him do that build, like that standard and get to a new place, okay? And so let's just discuss that, let's listen. Here we go. If I didn't screw up once, it'd be great. So I hope you heard that. All I'm doing there is playing um, the B flat major scale, hitting E flat chord tones on the E's, F uh, chord tones on the F's, and then kind of, you know, I start on this F here, and he's done this so many ways. You can hear him like by himself sometime, and stall, and hit a new E flat chord tone. This is an E flat chord tone. Um, and sometimes those tremolo click, like, like, really? It's up to you, and so you'll get that vibe. And I'm just going to talk about this section here. I mean, there's not much to do except rip organically on a B flat major scale, hit your E flat chord tones, hit your F chord tones, and every once in a while, when you want to move to a different section, do that build. Let me show you here, actually. So, so here's that scale that I talked about in the beginning. And so uh, my F is here. I'll do it here. Like, really? 
and I'll kind of come up here, you know, to a new section. So let's see if we can get that. I'm going to turn on a little bit of heavier distortion so we get a little bit more sustain, which is kind of quintessential to this jam. <laughs> Okay, hopefully that made sense. It's gonna be a long video. We're getting towards the ending now. We're getting towards the ending. The band is fired up, your backing track is faster, everything's faster, and when it comes to the ending, Trey does this, um, I'll say 6.5 times out of 10, so it's a good thing to throw in this video, which is, he's gonna go back to Arpeggioville, back to Cortoneville. I'm gonna show you two sets of arpeggios that I've seen in multiple um, videos on YouTube, it, which is, he's gonna start doing with these linear, back and forth arpeggios, where one from here, higher, back, higher, then higher and higher, and back and higher. And I'm just gonna show them to you right before, right before the ending. So the E flat major chord is on this 11th fret, and you have the, the frets here, 12, 11, 11, great, All right? And now, and now you're gonna have your 15th fret here, which is an arpeggio. He's gonna throw in the major second here, that F, I already talked about it. He loves putting this in the E flat. And so actually, you can kind of bar here, and. Then you can do the same thing for the F, up two frets. And then after these two, you can go to this E flat chord here, which the um, it's the C shaped here, but I'm showing the frets, 15 and 16, 15 on the high E, 16 here. And then you have your pinky on the um, 18th fret. And guess what, for the F up here, and so you can hear him kind of get there soloing like, back track to be faster actually I needed it to be faster because it is faster and I was like oh I wish it was faster but you can hear that happening now the very very ending I've heard so many endings but there's something that I've, I've heard several times this little uh, 17th fret 17th fret trill 18 I believe that's a signal for Fishman hey we've got a couple bars left before you do the doom 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 and so you, you can signal to your drummer and then he's gonna, you can sit and solo, you can sit and just finish it off. I've heard it go up to the E flat here, on the, the 21st fret, 23rd fret, and bend up to the F. I've heard him end it, or stall on the A. I've heard him stall on G down here. Sorry, my volume was, wasn't up. And so you can get these endings of something like this. Like, sorry, I had to turn my looper volume up. I really couldn't hear it. So here we go. So you can get these endings kind of like this. Like, like. Something like that. You can also get where I've seen them just uh, do like. Hold on the A. Like I said, I've also seen him do that G, just like a... I mean, he's done so much. So you pick what last note you want to do and just get there and hold it. There was so much in this video. I hope that if you're a fish fan, you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too much. I hope it was just right. Uh, go back and watch the whole thing if you need to. If you're a member of Patreon, don't worry, I'm filming like five videos maybe on how to practice all this stuff, like practice it so you can do it. Um, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you share this. Make sure you subscribe if you're a fish fan. Uh, give it a thumbs up, even if you don't like fish, because Trey is, Trey is a monster, and I tip my hat to him every time I listen, and so should you. I'll stop talking. Thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye.